All right, joining us right now is the commish, John Kaminsky, defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions. John, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, couldn't be better. So happy to have you. I know you just got out of practice. You're probably a little tired, but take making time for us is very kind of you. We'll, we'll get right into it. I want to start out really in the beginning of your time when you got to Detroit and uh, you were on waivers. Atlanta had had released you and it was a couple days later that the Lions and, and, and you got together and came up with a deal. Where was your head at professionally at that point? And and did you have any concerns about coming to Detroit? You know, from the historical perspective of the of the team, its reputation, but there was a new coach, new GM, kind of a new thinking. Where was your head at in this in this period of time and, and coming into Detroit? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know initially coming into Detroit, I was just excited uh, for an opportunity to play and um, God willing, some things happened, got, guys got hurt and I end up, ended up playing a lot towards the end of the season. And so uh, I was really just enjoying it. Um, it wasn't trending well for me, to, you know, in Atlanta. And so I was, I felt like I had nothing to lose. <clears throat> and I think that attitude helped me to cut it loose. And then going into the off season, I felt, uh, I felt, I felt at peace knowing that uh, I really let it rip and, and played my best ball. And so I felt um, kind of a calmness and peace that things were going to work out uh, for my good. Um, and so I was, I was really detached from it and I really enjoyed that time uh, just to relax and enjoy that. And then when I started to really think about, you know, the contract and is, is it going to happen? Are they going to bring me back? Um, you know, like I said, I, I, f I feel like I just had like a confidence uh, that that they were going to bring me back. It was just in what condition, what capacity. And for me, um, you know, obviously you want as much money as you can and as many guarantees as you can. But um, at the end of the day, I was just trying to get here to play football. And so um, we met some, uh, we had something, made a deal and uh, and here I am. So it's really exciting stuff. Yeah, you've uh, you've had quite a bit of change around you since you've been in Detroit, and change for the better. Uh, Aleem's come in. Uh, actually, Yuki was there when you were there, but uh, Aiden Hutchinson coming in. You play between those guys a lot. Like, first off, how easy is it when you've got like studs playing on either side of you? Because you didn't certainly didn't have that in Atlanta. You didn't necessarily have that when you first got here. And then just also like, how much have they improved over the time that you've been with them? Yeah, I mean, that's super cool to look to my left and right. And I got great players all around me. Uh, uh, I feel very blessed. And oftentimes it allows me to have one-on-ones and allows me to produce on the field as well. Um, but yeah, uh, just from an improvement standpoint, uh, Hutch impressed me right from the beginning, uh, the way he came in. Uh, he's very vocal and he, he's a fun-loving guy and uh, he's cool with everybody. But when he first got into uh, this building, he, he was stone quiet you know for month, like the first month he was here he was just whooping butt in camp you know just he wasn't he wasn't really chirping he was just letting his actions talk and that really impressed me uh about him and as he continued uh as he continued to dominate in practice and then he started to bring it to the to the game time you know then he started to open up more and um and he's really coming to his own he's found a leadership role on this team um He's sharpened the things that he does well. Uh, he's identified things that are flaws in his game and has worked on them, obviously. Um, and then Aline McNeil, um, uh, same thing. You know, he, he, you can tell, you know, he talked about studying guys like Grady Jarrett in the offseason, uh, you know, picking a guy that you know you can move like and you're just not moving that way yet. And so he, he studied film and he's starting to emulate that Grady Jarrett uh, style of playing football and, he, and he's really – at this point, creating his own style. And it's just really awesome to see. And it's awesome to be a part of uh, watching two young guys, um, you know, chase greatness. And that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Talk about chasing greatness. You're a guy who's, whose trajectory is just in line with the personality of this team. You are like almost the, the, the poster child for, for what this team kind of has as a personality. Like, go ahead and underestimate me. <laughs> There's a lot more here than you ever thought there was. And I, I look back and think back, it's been almost a year, eh, maybe eight months or whatever, but since you wore that, one year of focus can change your, and hustle can change your life forever. What does that mean to you? I know there's been a little bit of talk about that, but then from there, is it one year or is it just the first year and then you build another one year after that? Talk talk about that for me a little bit and what that mindset means. Yeah, yeah. Um for me, it was it just it clicked right for me because I was so worried about 
what me at my best is going to look like in the NFL. And I, so I'm in my first year and I'm, I'm in my second year and I'm thinking of that, you know, whatever it ends up being five and six years later that I'm playing my best ball, you know, and I was just so focused on that, that I was losing touch with the small details in the day, day to day, you know, through the first three years of my career. And so, um, you know, that shirt kind of came along, perfect timing. Um, and it just helped me to set my frame smaller. Let's think about now, what can we control now? What are the details we can work on now, uh, week to week, day to day? And it really just shortened that, uh, that frame of reference for me, that time. I'm not thinking so much big picture. It's like the NFL is like about a day to day, hour to hour improvement. And I feel like I was missing that. I was so focused on uh, you know, the future and, and when I get there kind of thing, instead of let's, let's get me there now, let's, you know, start taking the steps to improve now. And so, um, it just helped, you know, frame that time for me and, and think of more of a present moment, um, thing. And it just so happened that I started wearing that shirt literally a year before I signed that contract. So it was just, uh, it was a d divine thing for me. Um, and yeah, and so now, now that I have that experience, you know, I, I break things up into blocks of time much smaller than looking ahead five and six years. You know, it's a, yeah. I've been more of a present moment thinking with my career and uh, playing football. So uh, yeah, just it was just uh, it just helps uh, you know kind of flip the switch for me to to focus on the here and now. Yeah, it makes sense. I love that you you expressed though because the next question I have for you is talking about practice. And I know that there's an attention to detail in the Lions practices. And it sounds like that's like exactly what that's leading into for you. It's like being able to focus on like what is being taught to me at this time or like if they're installing something or if you're working on, you know, game prep for like, the Chargers this week. They're a very different offensive line than the last one you saw. You know, I think you're – does that like attention to small detail like that, has that really helped you as well? I think so. Uh, like I said, I was like – almost like throughout the season, it's it's just week to week. You study your opponent. How can I use my skill set to attack this opponent that also fits within the game plan? And that's what it is. Instead of like thinking of like, how do I become a great player? It's like you become a great player by focusing on those details in practice, taking it to the game and executing it that way. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's helped change a lot of things for me. And the Lions have been great to to work with us. We're here to raise money. That's that's the the, the number one thing we've been working on. And did a twenty four hour uh, live stream uh, last week raising money for St Jude. For those who'd like to donate, stjude.org slash dlp raising money for sick kids for their families. They never pay a dime when St Jude's there. And St Jude does some really really important research to help cancers, not just for ch children for, but for adults. I know we've all know somebody we've all been impacted in one way or another in our life and we appreciate the lions bringing you here to help us out with this um one of the things i think about in 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 the space patients need this too but dan campbell has done a great job of articulating the the word you have it on your head grit grit is this big this big word he's the talked grit. about he's been asked what it means to him but in fans you know we look at it we watch the way you play you know you're this 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 underdog kind of player who came in and and you've you've focused on these details as you were just talking about and and you've come to this new level of play and you've become a real favorite amongst a lot of the fans out there when we when we talked about you joining the show a lot of people got in touch and we're super excited about the fact we get to see john we get to see the commission come out and talk a little bit i want to know though for for you personally this idea of grit what does that mean for you if you were to talk about what what grit is to to the commission yeah, I think grit is um, you have a goal, you have something you want to achieve, you have something you want to get. Um, it's the ability to overcome and persevere through any obstacle that's thrown your way that gets in the way of that one thing. And so it's just like this idea of steadiness, not too high, not too low, right through the obstacles, whatever you have to do to overcome it, you do that and you do it confidently with your chest held high and your chin held high um, until you get there. And so, uh, you know, for us week to week, what grit would mean is, you know, win the game. So what's that look like? You know, it's, it's the tedious meetings, it's the practice, it's getting uh, ripped for doing the wrong thing and you got to go get it right. Uh, it's getting into the film room and taking it on the chin if you mess something up and, and be sharp for game day. And then when you're in game day, you know, maybe a 14 play swing 
it's like let's overcome this let's let's not bury ourselves in in the momentum of what this feels like in the stadium right now we have a goal in mind and we're going to push through this and with our chins held high chest held high uh, everybody stay up, stay steady, keep your heart rate down. Let's just, let's go win this game. So I want to follow up on that just a little bit because I've been to a lot of Lions games and a lot of away games. The game in Tampa this year was something completely different from a fan's perspective. It was, it was a complete takeover of Raymond James Stadium by the, by, by Lions fans. And Watching some of the fan, the, the players' faces, I and mean, we saw it with Hutch, I saw it with Rodrigo, I saw it with Dorsey, just looking with a look of awe on their face. And I, I also remember you at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the half, and kind of throughout, just like just ramping yourself up. I could see, I could see you just working, like getting in that in that mindset. What is it like? What do the fans bring to you? I mean, that as 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 you sit there on the sideline and you're away in a place like Tampa, 1,200 miles from Detroit, and you have this cadre of almost a home game of fans. What does that feel like for the players? Uh, it's just uh, just the energy. I mean, we feed off energy, and so you go in there. It's just it's just reassurance that you're doing the right thing. You're winning ball games. You're playing at a high level. Um, it's you know it's kind of like a temporary medal that you get to wear you know almost and and it just it just reassures and it shores up all that all of the loose ends of your confidence you know that you're doing the right thing and, and we're winning games because of what we're doing in this building and what we're doing on a day to day so uh, built helps us to build confidence and then just like right at the beginning of the game just the noise and the love that you get um, you know you they're bringing it so we got to bring it kind of thing and uh, and we did so. Yeah, you did. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good times. I want to go back to, uh, you're from Barberton, Ohio. Um, I'm a Cleveland guy myself, so I, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than you, and I remember Chris Spielman being like a god when I played, and he's from like right by there. Um, did you know of the legend of Chris Spielman? Because he was probably retired before you ever got into it, and uh, does he ever talk with you about like like all in that area? Because like, if, if people who don't know, High school football is like the number two sport in Northeast Ohio. <laughs> like it's it's bigger than everything else. It's bigger than the Cavs, bigger than the Guardians or Indians, whatever you want to call them. Like, uh, do you ever get to relate with him on that? Uh, yeah, uh, we've had we've had a couple conversations, and um, he knows where I'm from, and I know where he's from. Um, but there there's there is like a nod of respect, you know, just just Northeast Ohio boys, and it's really cool, you know, like. My dad wooed and awed that I was going to be in the same building as Chris Spielman, you know. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool uh, just just to be able to speak with them. And, you know, guys like that just kind of carry uh, an aura of light, you know, just because, you know, they're a legend, you know. And um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome being able to talk with him. And uh, usually, you know, simple, small conversations. Um, but, yeah, there's always like this nod of respect. It's really cool uh, to be in the same building and shake hands with that guy. So. I'll tell you, I would uh, that you get to be in the building with him too, but his, he's gone from, from his playing days to how he leads now is very, very interesting. And, and even coach Campbell, right? His leadership style, a lot of people don't talk about that. They talk about kneecaps and things like that, the kind of the headline grabby things, but you can tell yeah. coach Campbell's a really, really smart cat. And he's, he's one of those leaders that just people will, will, will do anything to be able to follow and, and, and show him what they have. I'd love to hear like one thing, what was the most impactful thing that you can think of that Coach Campbell has said or done for you in the time that you've been with him in the Lions? It's, uh, I'd say for me, it's like he says, have a reason for what you're doing on the field and fly around and I won't be mad at you. And that attitude sets me free. Um because a lot of organizations are fear-based. Like, it's like kind of like do this or you or else kind of thing. And his is like, I want to see you guys fly around. You know, this is, we all love this. You know, that we, we want to see you guys play fast, you know. And so, um, he unleashes guys that way. And he makes everybody feel comfortable that way. Obviously, you don't want to cut loose that you completely disregard your job. But he uh, he sets me free that way. And, and that's been awesome for me. And it helped me to adopt that attitude of just letting it rip out on there out there on the field so uh he's definitely helped that flip that switch for me let's let's talk about practice a little bit you guys obviously with all the injuries and you know contact limits and everything probably can't get super intense in practice but going against 
the offense and you, you're going against great offensive line uh, and in practice, are they ever like setting things up where like, oh, I didn't see that coming, you know, catching you guys off guard when when they're trying to install things like that, like in your like, just like appreciate the creativity or the execution that you're going against? Uh, yeah. Um, something cool that we do is we do our team period. So, you know, our offense versus look defense, something we do. Uh, defense versus look offense, how everybody does it. But after every team period, we do a situational play where we go ones versus ones. And so, uh, you know, on Thursdays, like today, we that's more of our third down day. Um, <clears throat> and so often we'll be in a play that's third and six, third and seven. And, you know, everybody in the building thinks it's pass and they run some kind of guard count, guard tackle pool some kind of intricate run play and they end up picking seven seven yards up on a third and seven which you know most teams aren't running the ball on third and seven it's just kind of that ben johnson uh magic that they that they, they're just drawing stuff up over there and so yeah you, you see stuff all the time um you know guys make comments like you know thank god we're not playing against an offense like this this is a type of offense that would frustrate a d-line like they're going to be i did must be annoying playing that team and uh and so yeah it's just there's definitely like uh, like <clears throat> special uh, minds over there drawing up plays, and uh, they always they always seem to catch us off guard in those situational plays. You know, uh, especially like those third and six, third and seven, they'll drop some kind of crazy screen or elaborate run play. So, yep. All right, well, we're getting we're getting to here to close to time. One last question for you, John. Really appreciate you spending a little couple minutes here with us. Um, your relatively new father. Congratulations, by the way. It's always great to have a, a, a new one around. It kind of gives a new perspective. But I want to ask, when no one's around, when football is kind of settled for the day, there's no more studying to do, no more work there to do, the family's settled in, and the commission gets a little bit of me time, what do you like to do? What's the thing that you really appreciate to doing that is kind of different from all the the, to- the typical responsibilities of of general life as it is? It is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I like to slow down anything that can really slow me down and slow my mind down, uh, being on the water or being uh, in the woods or, um, you know, going on a bike ride or going golfing, stuff that's like really calm on the mind. This is a really fiery environment and it's very uh, demanding and uh, puts a lot of strain on your mental. And so uh, definitely like slowing down. I told my wife I'm going to take at least – a full 365 days to do nothing and not put pressure on myself so that I can find that thing that uh, I really want to do um, and make sure that I'm, I'm going the right way and not rush into it. Um, and so, yeah, like for me, like as soon as this thing's over, you know, finding ways to slow down and, uh, you know, kind of process what has been happening because it's just happened so quick. You know, you go to high school, you go to college, play college ball. I got married right after college and then I was right into the pre-draft stuff and it just hasn't slowed down for me. And so it's like just being able to uh, look at the world in a non-NFL environment is going to be different for me and it's going to take some time. So, um, yeah, just any way I could slow down, be out there in the woods. Uh, I got a couple acres of property, so, you know, just playing around in the woods and uh, we get to – uh, get into the pond and stock the pond up. So I'm, I'm really, there's some things that I'm looking forward to for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of the O-line guys are into that. So uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. you can make peace one day. <laughs> John, <Yeah. I> re- <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate you having, having you on the show, you joining us. I got to tell you, you guys have really put something special together there in Allen park. And uh, for, for somebody who's been around watching this team since Billy Sims and uh, been just, cheering, yelling, wanting something. You guys have really done something special for the city and you guys have a, a great resume put together. Really hoping you guys get the big prize because you all deserve it. You've brought a lot of joy to the city and the, and the fans. So I want to thank you for all you've done. Best of luck this year. Stay healthy and stay with it, man. You guys are doing great work. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you for joining, man.